So in a live stream a couple of nights ago, I showed lubing, sizing, and gas checking this Lyman 311284, and we talked about the rifle that it's going to go in, and we even showed some footage from the bore cam down the bore of the rifle, and I said I would show the rifle in a future video. So here is the rifle, and this is a 1898 Springfield 3040 Crag that I picked up at a recent gun show. The serial number puts it in uh, early production of 1899. The rifle looks to be uh, representative of the type. It's uh, intact. It has not been modified or sporterized. This rifle sits right now exactly how I purchased it. I haven't done anything. I haven't cleaned it. Um, I've only looked down the bore with the bore scope a little bit. Uh, one thing you'll notice right away is we've got a little bit of a, a varnish color on a lot of the steel parts. I believe that was some sort of preservative that was put on it at some point in time. It's pretty well covered with it. It's on the stock. It's on the barrel. Um, I think that will clean up just fine. So I'm going to spare everyone the normal 3040 Craig, Craig Jorgensen run around with the uh, capsule magazine and all of the statistics and history because it's covered very well elsewhere. I strongly recommend the episode uh, that Othias did on CN Arsenal. Very, very good coverage of the Craig rifles all the way from the beginning to, to the end. But uh, this one is, uh, I think, a pretty representative example of what they would have been in uh, early 1899, right down to the intact Dixon sight that has not had the corners rounded. Um, I didn't know everything there is to know about Craig's when I purchased this rifle. I knew that it could have either a earlier Dixon sight or a Buffington sight or a later. I mean, they switched around and Othias' episode on CN Arsenal goes over it. What I did discover after more research is that this appears to be a very early uh, 1899 Dixon sight. Um, the things that are to look for on these from what I've gathered is that it doesn't have a slot along the side or a detent. It has the three notches and the square corners of the sight head have not been rounded. And it does not have a screw slot in the adjusting screw on this side. So that looks like that's pretty desirable and it does seem to be appropriate to this rifle. This would have been during the time frame when they had switched to a little bit higher velocity ammunition from the standard 220 grain 2,000 foot per second load. So this sight, I believe, would be regulated to the faster ammunition that was only around for a small amount of time, but I'm thrilled that the corners are not rounded on the rear sight. That, uh, that's a nice surprise uh, that, that uh, that's desirable that way. The sling, I don't know, it looks like it's just a commercial 1907, you know, replica sling type thing. So. I think the next steps are going to be to uh, run a bore brush down it. Um, everyone did see in the video that I did the live stream, you know, what the bore looks like. I think the bore is going to be fine. There is some crud in there. There's a little frostiness to it and what looks to be maybe a little bit of lead in there. Um, but the rifle seems to, to be uh, everything I'd like it to be. Um, I've looked at Craig's for probably a year, year and a half now. Um, there was one that was very similar to this one that I passed on, but uh, at, like I said, at that gun show this past, not this past weekend, but the weekend before uh, is when I picked this one up here in Jackson, Michigan. So I did uh, I did come up with some brass at the local shop. It's uh, Graf's head stamp. I don't know who makes this brass for Graf's, but it's the primer pockets look really nice. The flash holes are really clean. Uh, no burrs in it or whatnot. I did uh, trial chamber a couple pieces. They are tight. Uh, you can see a little bit of a ring there on the shoulder where it is head spacing off the shoulder. Uh, I did not close the bolt all the way because I have not cleaned out the chamber or anything. Once I clean it out real good, I'll go ahead and chamber one and see if the bolt will close. If so, I'll do the initial firing without changing the brass at all. If it uh, is too tight, I will just push the shoulder back a little bit. Uh, I would prefer to have it head spacing off both the shoulder and the rim simultaneously if it's possible. Fit it in there tight, then I'll limit the brass stretch. I did pick up a set of lead eyes for 3040 Craig. 
and the uh, trimmer trim gauge to, that'll get me on the way to taking care of it but uh, let me push this back a little bit and we'll uh, lay the rifle down and you can get a little bit of a look at the other side of it so but uh, on this side the condition is very similar to the other obviously and like I said it's got whatever this I don't know if that's uh, hardened up cosmoline or some sort of preservative that it was stored with at some time. I bought it from an, a gentleman that was uh, was elderly. Uh, he was selling some things. He had uh, multiple items at the show. He said he'd had the rifle a long time, didn't really remember when and how. Um, some other people looked at it while I was there and uh, I kind of was interested in it right from the start when I started looking at it. and. Uh, Negotiated with the gentleman, went over it with him, and uh, I looked on the internet and found a little more information than I already knew, and it, it made me comfortable enough to make the purchase uh, of the rifle. And uh, as far as markings, um, the cartouche on the side that's normally here is is uh, is worn off or whatnot, and it it almost looks like there may have been a little repair in the in this area maybe there was some splitting or whatnot but uh, something this age it doesn't surprise me that there might be a little bit of you know or maybe that's just scratching I, I can't tell but uh, if we look at the bottom we do have the P mark there and we do have a, a letter D which you know I don't know the significance of these markings so, you know the P I think is an acceptance stamp or whatnot proof firing or something of that nature. I'll have to do more studying. I'm no expert on that stuff. I, I'm learning as I go with these. This is probably the, you know, other than my M1, which was a CMP rifle, I have not went after American mill serps. So this is kind of my first American mill serp. My previous experience lies more along the lines of uh, South American Mausers and a few other things, some Swedes and things of that nature. So this is kind of my first venture, you know, other than an M1, which I just bought from the CMP, it had, you know, it was a easy purchase. You just write them a check and off you go. But uh, I say I've been looking at the crags for a while and I think this one is gonna fill the void in my collection pretty well. Um, I'm looking forward to shooting it. The uh, 311284 is a bullet that was dimensioned around the, the crags chamber. So that should work pretty well for that. Uh, I've been looking at load data and figuring things out and studying it, trying to decide what to start with. I may shoot some, I do have some 220 grain jacketed bullets. I can uh, do some uh, entry level charges with that as well to get a start. Um, and then, uh, you know, the main consideration now is just to start gently disassembling and cleaning up the rifle. I believe that this uh, preservative will, will come off without any problem. It looks like there's even some on the stock here and there, um, a little thicker back here than, than further forward. I'll take a real close look at the lumber in this area and just make sure everything's okay. Um, I don't see anything that, that bothers me too much there. Like I said, I see a little line there, but you know those might be tool marks rather than something, but we'll, you know, the, the cutoff is uh, working good there. And so I'm very pleased with the rifle. I said in the live stream, I had said that I would show it. So this is it. The next step is to start working on getting it cleaned up. So how much of it do the viewers want to see? How much of the cleanup do you want to see? Do you just want to have it come back ready to go? Are you interested in some of the processes um, that I do? Um, this one, I believe as long as the fasteners treat me well, um, I may uh, work ahead maybe even this evening and put a couple drops of penetrant on all of the fasteners. The screws do look to be in good shape. I mean, it's obviously been turned a couple times in the past, but they're not terribly boogered up. Uh, on this band here, there's the U mark. I don't know the significance of that. I still have more learning to do. The screw looks fine. The uh, guard screws in the bottom, they look fine. I don't see anything at all on this rifle that really bothers me other than whatever it's kind of got on it, but I believe that'll all clean off. Um, I don't see any serious rust or anything. Everything just, everything here that has this discoloring, that's whatever that varnish or preservative is that's on it. And I believe that that will all clean up just fine. So I'm pretty excited about it. We'll, uh, we'll work on this one. I do have another couple of projects that are important to me as well. 
Um, I, I do have some commitments that I've promised to some others on some rifle projects that I need to, to work on too. So uh, this one's going to be getting attention quickly, um, mainly because I do want to make sure it's all looking okay beneath the stock line and all that. I don't, I don't imagine that I'm going to have rusting problems. It looks like it was stored reasonably well and, and it all looks good and get the preservatives off of it and I think it's going to be just fine. Um, I don't know what a crag would have had in service for a sling. I need to do more research. Um, like I said, I think this is just a inexpensive commercial 1907. I don't think it's anything, I don't think it's anything uh, that's all that big of a deal. So I think it's just something somebody put on here, but I don't know for sure. I'll look it over. I don't see anything on it as far as that would give away what brand it was or anything like that. But I mean, there, there must be a hundred different variants of that style of sling. So if you recognize it, say something, but leave me some comments as to what you want to see on this rifle. I'm planning to just clean it up. I'm going to just clean the stock up, um, get as much of the, the, uh, varnish type stuff that's on the surface off, just some gentle cleaning, obviously clean up the steel parts. And then depending on what I find beneath the wood, if it needs to be steamed or boiled, I can go about that, but it may not even need that. It may just need to be cleaned real good. And then, um, you know, brought back up to looking black with some kerosene and stuff like that. So we'll see how it goes once I get into it. So that's the 1898 Craig. I've had it, like I said, a little over a week now. I bought it, uh, there was a gun show this weekend locally, and then there was a gun show the week before right here in town in Jackson, Michigan. So uh, it's what the, it's like the 3rd of April today, I believe. So a week ago was when I purchased this rifle roughly. So that's what the Craig looks like. And we'll start working on getting it cleaned up. You know, it's got the, it's got the, uh, being a 98, it's got the little uh, spot in the back. And this was, I'll show you guys this. This was funny. I noticed this at the gun show. See if I can do this with one hand. Um, if I can get that trap door open. Okay, so that's open. When I was at the gun show, I opened that up because I wondered if it had cleaning rods in there. And what's actually in there is kind of funny. There was no cleaning rods in it, but let's see if these come out. Oh, no, there they go. There's one of them. <laughs> There's, there were, uh, oh, that's the lid itself. Let me uh, get this up a little bit here. I need some clearance if I can get this out doing this one-handed well that's not gonna do that for me I might have to do it by hand hmm. all right well give me a minute I'll shake them out I might have to do this off camera yeah, I think I can do this now here we go no cleaning rod but there are some vintage matches in there. <laughs> so how's that for a trophy beneath the patch cover in your crag? Some vintage matches. <laughs> I don't know how long those have been in there, but they've been in there a while. It was funny because they shook those out at the gun show and the, the fellow that was selling it thought it was pretty funny. He said he didn't remember anything like that. So they may have been there in there before he uh, got a hold of it even. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the Craig. So I'll get busy on getting it going. And like I said, put in the comments what you think, what you'd like to see. And if you uh, have a uh, good knowledge of Craig's, share what you know. I wouldn't mind hearing it. I'm pretty excited about the rifle. I really like the rear sight. I think it's uh, really cool that I managed to score one that does not have rounded corners on the on the sight head so that's really nice it's still got all three notches and nice sharp corners so thanks everybody for watching and we'll get busy working on this crag